Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to all of our listeners here at Sembang Sehat by Sehat Sehat. It's another episode, it's a new day obviously and today a very special guest, someone who is very well known in the music world, the underground music world and now he, he went mainstream for a while, he went mainstream and now he's back. He's back <laughs> with something new and guess what? He has expanded himself like beyond the scope of the music industry and he's doing like so many different things now. Um, example, it's like esports and now also real estate. So, please, guys, welcome Cody Co X Fu. Hello, 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 Mike. How are you doing, man? I'm good, man. I mean, like that's like a like I gave you like a very like major entrance. Like I respect like woo or something. Dude, that was some crazy intro. Dude. I I'm afraid I might not live up to that to that to the my you know to the hype. You know what I'm saying? Uh, fair. I mean, come on, dude. I mean, here's the here's the hype that you all you need. Okay. Five time, five time, five time, five time beatbox champion, man. I mean, like yeah. that is a huge accomplishment. I mean, that's yeah. I mean, like so, like I mean, like just for a major start off. So to those of us who don't know you, so okay, would you mind just give us a little bit of the hint to your background? All right. Um. So all right. Uh, my name is Cody. Um, I'm from Penang, right? I'm from this small little town called Bukit Mutajan, Penang, right? Um, and uh, I, I grew up there, uh, came over to uh, Subang to pursue my further studies uh, in audio engineering. And that was pretty interesting because I uh, uh, didn't have money to pay for college, right? Uh, and, uh, 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 but what I did get was uh, I got to loan the first three semesters worth of uh, cash flow okay. from, my, uh, uh, from, my, from my parents, right? So, so after that, I was on my own. I was like, ah, uh, what do I do then, right? Um, and and at the time, uh, I was I was going to SAE. Oh yeah, right? so now Epitome College, right? Yeah, now it's Epitome College, College, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's some run. I have no idea what they're doing, <laughs> but it's not the SAE I know and love. So SAE uh, back then uh, they offered a, a really attractive uh, dual diploma. All oh, right, fair enough. So 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 you could do film and you could do audio engineering oh, at the same cool. time. So you cover both bases. Yeah. Um, and it was very heavily um, assignment based, so a lot of projects, a lot of things to do, uh, uh, and very little class time. So what I could do uh, was pick up both sides of the work to do both diplomas, right, and try to figure out how to survive in between. So I figured I can't uh, take a full time job. There's there's no way I could do all these three things at the same time, right? And how am I gonna cough up six point four k every four months? That's that's semester fee right yeah. there, and not yeah. to mention the rent in between. I'm I'm not from here, you know what I mean. So I I rented a small little room in Taipan, uh, USJ nine, right? Uh, and <laughs> and that was fun. That was really, really it was half warehouse for some event company, and I was staying in one of the rooms, and the rest of the it's just filled with merchandise from all the promotional shows that they did, right? Uh, from Green Lantern to to your to your basic Marvel superhero movie. <laughs> Fair enough. So that's that 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 was pretty interesting. Uh, managed to managed to pull through it. Lived on beatboxing uh, for a good five years. All right. Paid for college. It was fantastic. Um, got to uh, uh, got to travel around Southeast Asia for a little bit. Uh, uh, suddenly, like clubs started inviting me from uh, uh, Cambodia. I went to Thailand. Damn. And and uh, um, my biggest uh, craziest gig was uh, performing in this um, exclusive. Rooftop open air, uh, a uh, 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 club in Macau, on New Year's Eve, and it was crazy because it was real high up. Like we're talking about like sixty floors high up, right? Okay. And it was a full open bar. We're talking about twenty thousand dollar bottle services, right? And I could see the entire skyline, filled, just lit up with fireworks on New Year's midnight, and it was fantastic in Macau. Like that was my craziest experience. I'll pay for it. They paid me super, super well. They paid me five digits to go there. <laughs> I can't imagine. I mean, they paid twenty thousand dollars for the bottles. I mean, like they, they're pretty sure they could pay you highly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was for me. It was mind blowing. I mean, I'm just a small town kid from 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 Bukit Mandajam, right? Uh, couldn't even pay for college, and 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 there I was, you know, four or five years later, um, just doing the thing, right? I mean, like my God, dude. I mean, like that is the underdog story of like, <laughs> like that is the a Malaysian underdog story where you yeah. came from, like a very small town, and like. I mean, beatboxing was like a like a very like although it was well known, it was well known underground that time because like hip hop scene was like was like going up. I would say because like Sona was coming up. Yeah. And then um like uh Capri not well Caprice. So this is giving this sure. is that, sure why not sure I mean, sure why not right sure. 
So um, unfortunately, I had to mention the Prince of Damansara. Please don't hate me for this. <laughs> the Prince of Damansara, so, notorious. So um, like, like I said, like a lot of the guys, even the old school guys, were getting back their names. Like Ultimate, he was getting back his name. Salah Music was getting oh, yeah. back his name. Yeah. So yeah. hip hop and beatboxing go hand in hand. Like if some for some of us who are not very familiar with the beatbox world, hip hop world, so it is like very tied together, right? Yes. Yes, yes. 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 So um. How did you manage to make this into like a career? Because like beatboxing was a very small thing, but then you made it a skill, and you and from that talent you made it into money. How did that? How did you do that? I think to any approach to any business, um, um, uh, I it is so difficult to come to the plate and answer these questions when you're when you're given it, uh, the chance to. It's just so difficult to compute your your thoughts in a in a linear way for for your audience to understand. But let me try to let me let me attempt my best attempt. Okay, um, I believe right what we're selling people is entertainment. Yeah, it's true. We're giving them um, what their attention is worthwhile, and people then value their attention with a monetary value, right? Yeah, um, I could have done anything. I could have been a stand-up comedian. I could have been, I could have been a magician, right? But I chose a, a, a particular medium, and the medium was just beatboxing. Essentially, what I did, I just became an entertainer, right? So yeah. as an entertainer, I built a career as an entertainer, right? And being something uh, uh, in such a niche art form, especially um, with such a steep learning curve, um, um, it's it's it, it was very fun. It was very challenging, and it approached. So many angles, right? That 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 made my brain, uh, it, that that tickled my brain well enough for me to stay in the game for so long, um, and 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 just like learning a piece of music, um, beatboxing is it's not just learning a piece of music. It's 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 also tuning your body <laughs> to make the right sound, and that takes years. The muscle development, the lip movement, the understanding of your body, the understanding of how sound sound like from your head, from inside your head versus how it sounds like outside your head. All these things come into play, and 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 the love of the art form pulled me through. But it was understanding that entertainment was the value I was providing people that gave me the opportunity to turn into a career. Wow. So you, I mean, so um, just to go a bit deeper, like how, on the part where you had to like know every single vibration in your body, like those vibrations are the ones that make the sound on yeah. your body, right? So, like, how did you train, like? I mean, how many hours? Like, can you give us like a timetable of how you did your time management? How did you, when when did you do it, and like how did you recover as well? I think beatboxing is a uh, it's a crazy art form because yeah, you're right. You have to give your time, uh, your body time to recover. Yeah. Uh, your vocal cords bleed. Uh, 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 your 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 body is just used to getting more more and more used to higher pressures of air pressure, and uh, uh, as you squeeze out those sounds, uh, so it it definitely takes time, but. The advantage of being a beatboxer is that you can bring your instrument wherever you go. <laughs> That's true. Unlike some people who have to carry a guitar some, yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So, I'll, I'll be at the JPG office waiting to renew my driver's license <laughs> for two, three hours and there you go. Right? <laughs> advantage of being a Malaysian somewhat gave me a lot of practicing time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, I guess in a positive, in a good way, you can say that you made very, you made very good use of time. Yes. 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 I would I, say that. Yeah, I definitely squeezed every ounce of my my, my, my seconds that I could to to practice a new sound, um, um, and sometimes it would take me months, months to just learn one one stupid sound. But my God, when you get that that feeling, that euphoria, right. that euphoria, broski, it is unknowable. It is indescribable. Yeah. When you just hit that certain part you hit that zone yeah wow so i mean i like, wow. can you just like demonstrate like like if it's from the throat like well, how would it sound like you know what i mean okay so um like sorry because i'm not a musician so it's like i know like throat sound sounds different like bass is here yes that's all i know like bass is here and alto is here yes okay that's uh, all i know <laughs> um the vocal cords you can use it in so many ways uh mm -hmm. uh, uh we all know the falsetto which is mm -hmm. speaking highly mm -hmm. Using not really your vocal cords, but we're kind of using your vocal cords, like making. So um, the advantage to that is I can make sounds like this. Um, and the opposite of that, right, is yeah, is, is 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 reaching your lower end, right? Yeah. So yes. it's how far can you go, like so so. 
So you can reach as far as you can okay. to, to, to the point where you can vibe and can hear each vibration flap. Right. So the, you can you can you can push your vocal cords to kind of really be loose and just just get that really low frequency out. Um, you can train all of that. You can you can make all of that happen. Okay. Um, that is, I guess that. How do you train? Like because like I mean, not to give out your secrets or whatever, but like, like how do you train? Because like it's very hard because it's not something tangible. You know, like yeah. we work out. Like we we work out, so we know like okay, we train our muscles. You know, it's gonna get big, right? But like when it comes to like something that's so intangible, like your vocal cord, like voice, like sound. Yeah. Although it comes back to a mm. science where vibration creates sound, but how will you train the vibration to move at a certain frequency that you want to control? You know what I mean? Um. Hmm. It's a it's it's indeed a it's it's a very good question. It's a very tricky question to answer as well. Um um ideas and thoughts, right? I think it is as tangible as forming a speech. Fair enough. Um you need to you need to understand your delivery, your tone, and also your execution. Um they all they all come into play when you're delivering the content of the speech, right? Yeah. We all know the content. The content is congratulations, you're very well done, blah, 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 blah. But it's the intonation and the 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 the, the well put nuance that brings life into your speech. And just like an idea, right? And you harvest and execute the idea, you can execute something as intangible as 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 a sound, right? To to focus your body in in that direction of understanding uh, number one, how frequencies work, and number two, how your body works, and 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 if you can combine those two together, um, you can you can make magic. You can really really make magic. Wow. Okay, man. I mean, cause like this is something that is so unusual to most everybody. You know, cause like yeah. I mean, coming from you're like talking here to you is like this is a rare opportunity to like dive deep into someone who does beatboxing for a living and who has mastered that craft. You know, I mean. From my point of view, I feel that you have mastered that craft because the thank you. It's not just the ability to like throw out two different kinds of of like vibrations. You know, it's like that range of like from here to here to here. It's like when an actor can only deliver one facial feature. It's like he's not, you're not you're not that good of an actor. But if you are an actor who can really really like give out so many range of emotions, like you can play anger set in like just one scene. That's like that's amazing. Yeah, and I think that's what you are because like you're playing. You can manipulate the, the, your vibrations, your own body to do what you want. And in a way, doesn't it, in a way, in your in your opinion, doesn't it, in a way, isn't it like you know yourself, like you are in control of yourself? Like just your opinion. Um, I think as a human being, um, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty lucid. Um, I'm pretty aware of uh, where I am. Um, I'm also pretty aware of how, how, how things don't really matter. Um, so I, I would say yes, uh, I am quite aware, um, but that's, um, that's besides uh, uh, me practicing my craft. Um, I believe it is because I have such a viewpoint that I decided to pursue a craft so, 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 so deeply. Like there is no reason for anyone to, to practice a baseline until your throat starts bleeding. There is no real good reason why anyone should do that, right? Um, but it is also with the same breath that I think that, I mean, it it doesn't really matter. Nothing really matters. So why not pursue greatness? Why not go for the thing that you just want to do? Because what's the alternative? What is the alternative besides knowing yourself fully? There is, there is no alternative. People say ignorance is bliss. Um, but I say, I say when the curtains are pulled back, uh, although life may not be so pretty, but you get a clearer picture. And I would, and yeah, I prefer to live like that. Whoa, that is a way too deep answer for a simple <laughs> question like that. That I is mean, way I mean, too. Oh, whoa! Oh, I mean, that was about, that was the. I think based on this entire podcast that we've done, like three episodes, I think like this was the biggest like mind-blowing answer we ever got like <laughs> i mean like my, even my my sound and sound engineer is like nodding like damn thanks cody i mean like that's like a lot for our audience to dwell upon like, yeah think yeah upon. yeah apologies if that if you're listening to this at 7 a.m in the morning you, <laughs> you do not deserve such such 
existential <laughs> contemplation. Like, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. Apologies, apologies. But yes. I mean, thank you for that. Like, oh my God. Like, thank you for that. I, like, I want to have a follow-up question to that, but like, Jesus, that just put it there. I mean, like, thank you for sharing that. I mean, like, you basically like opened up to us. I mean, that's the thing with so many people, like being vulnerable and being open about their emotions, their dark sides. Like, we don't do that. Like, majorly, we don't do that. Yeah, I think we as a culture, uh, we definitely stand to benefit a little bit more if you're a bit more vulnerable yep. to the people around us. Um, but at the end of the day, nothing really matters as well. So it doesn't matter if you're vulnerable. doesn't matter if you aren't. Um, just just do you. Just as long as you're happy. As long as you're very satisfied with life. But if you're not, then maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> adopt my way of life. Join my cult. <laughs> Join my call zero one two five six 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 six. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, I mean like that's way too many sixes for a cult, man. I mean like usually it just ends it with three sixes. Yes. Yes. But that that was the cult's phone number. You can call. <laughs> <laughs> you can call for a membership. Um, it's fifty eight ringgit per month. Yeah, um, sounds like a cult to me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sounds like yoga class. That's what it is. <laughs> Dude, yoga class, yoga is supposed to be helpful to people. No, 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 no it is. Yeah. So is my cult. So. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll drop it. I'll drop it. it. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So, I'm going to just backtrack a bit. So, this I want to talk about your time at SAE. Da, okay? Yeah, sure. So, um, besides for what you learn, right? I mean, mm-hmm. like, you did a lot of audio enge- uh, sound engineering and filming. So, like, but I also did check your LinkedIn, and apparently, you were doing, you were working at Trax FM in 2011, but you were in SAE for three years. So, was that an internship or was that work? Yeah, uh, so I was um, um, I was pulled into Trax FM uh, to be a radio DJ um, for about, I did it for about nine months, eight, eight to ten months, somewhere along that line. Um, and and what, what I was doing was uh, I was doing the kids show. So our, uh, Trax FM uh, had a segment um, just for children um, where we would uh, bring in really cool people and we interview them in a way that um, uh, is suitable for a children's audience. Okay. So within that, I don't know, 40 plus weeks, I've interviewed 40 plus amazing people from Pandela Rinong when she first, like, this was in 2011, yeah, you know? I this mean, was like, like, like... This is like a whole new world. There was a, this was a decade ago, basically. Yeah, like it, Pandela Rinong at the time was like 15 years old and she fresh off, got bronze off for some... Uh, I think it was the 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 Commonwealth maybe the common yeah the Sea Commonwealth Games exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, and 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 from there uh, uh, I I interviewed many authors many people um, but I realized that, that that I could not keep up the workload so I had to quit. Understood. Yeah. I mean, like I just want to check. I just want to ask because like one thing about you is that you do a lot of things. Like before we move on to the bigger part, like this I think this is like the start of it where you manage to like work and study at the same time. While trying to pay off your rent. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, any... How old were you? 19? 18? Yeah, I was 19. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I mean, like, for a 19-year-old to go through that much, I don't know, over events, I would say, situations. I mean, like, yeah. how how did you take it, man? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I, Yeah, it was truly a hellish time. Uh, uh, it was truly a very, very, very difficult time in my life. Uh, doing two courses and having... Um, um, the assignments pile up, uh, and they're not small assignments. Yeah, they're, I can imagine they're all practical work. They're all practical work, like making a podcast like this one, uh, writing scripts, um, um, doing MCP work. Um, it all comes down to, 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 to being a, a real part of the production industry, right? And 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 I <laughs> just doing two degrees uh, at the same time was 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 hell, hellish enough, but at, but at the time. Uh, it was great because I could go into the, the radio station uh, 24 hours. So I could do my work at 4 a.m. So what I would do uh, sometimes uh, uh, is that um, uh, this was the time when Vertigo, the club, just opened. Was it the one, was it the one in like a... It was in Hedigeo? Gardens. Garden? It was in Gardens uh, on the top floor of Gardens Mall. What the one in Bangsa? Yeah. Valley. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So there was a club called Vertigo and it just it just opened. And I remembered uh, 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 that I scored at night. I, 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 I beatboxed uh, every Thursdays, right, on Hip Hop Night with, um, um, with uh, Vandal, which is, uh, I'm not sure if you know Vandal, but his name is Jason Shot. Uh, shout out to Jason the Shot. Canadian guy? Yeah, he's a Canadian no, guy. Right, yeah, yeah, I know him. And, uh, and DJ Kino. Uh, so 
so so so we held every Thursday night down, uh, uh, and, and it paid well, you know. Um, um, at the time, uh, I was just nineteen, so I wasn't even legal to be in a club. To be in that club, in that specific club, um, but I was legal to work. Ah, so 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 I just didn't drink. I just couldn't drink, uh, even though there was free drinks on the table. But but I was disciplined enough to get it done. And from eleven to three a.m., we rocked it out. It was it was amazing. Every week, Thursdays. From for like eight months or like seven months straight, and it was crazy. And at the time, uh, I was doing tracks FM at, uh, at yeah. the same time as well. So what I would do after the club, um, I would <laughs> we would wrap up at three a.m. I'll go out for a meal, and then I'll go back to RTM to finish my work. I mean, your coursework and your coursework or your work 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 work. Uh, oh. What I had to do for tracks FM, I had to write scripts, I had to produce the show, uh, uh, and it was uh, it was it was uh, quite an interesting uh, uh, experience, definitely. Yeah, I mean, like, I can't imagine, like, if... I mean, I'm not trying to say, like, kids today are pampered. Or, like, for probably someone out there, some 19-year-old is going through the same thing you are going through right now. I mean, I'm like, so sure, yeah. I'm sure, yeah. So, Life I mean, like, if, if by any chance one of those kids who are listening right now, like, what can you advise them? Like, please, like, share, share something. Maybe they need that support, man. Look, there's not much advice I can give you because it will be an insult to your situation if I give you a general piece of advice. What I can, however, tell you is that your patience will pay off one day. It does not matter your situation. That is the law of the universe. Your patience will definitely wear, uh, uh, pay off. Sorry, not wear off. But it will pay off and it will reward you greatly provided that you plan your steps well. There is no advice I can give you to withstand the onslaught of life. Life is very difficult. Let's not sugarcoat it. Life is very, very difficult. But you are tougher than life. You are a human being. You have lived on this earth for more than millennia. Your parents, your ancestors came before you living way harder lives. Understand that you are in the best generation that you can ever be. You are in the most comfortable generation you will ever be in, in the history of earth. And understand that although your situation is difficult, you are way tougher than that. So, just be patient. Keep your head down. Do your work. Do your work. Yeah. If anything, that's the... Yeah. You know what? Scrap my past advice. Just do your work. All right? So, who cares about your patience? No one cares about you. Just do your work. And then you will get there. I mean, like, um, you were still sugarcoating it in a certain way. I mean, like, usually when people will say, like, you know, you gotta get your shit done. And then you'll... You can put it that way, yeah. but it means the same thing. <laughs> Just do your work <laughs> and you'll be great. Just commit <laughs> and do it. I, f- do I it. see the <laughs> real Chinese mentality coming out right there. Man. That's right. Work done. I'm so Chinese. You have no idea. <laughs> my work ethic is pristine because of my Chinese school upbringing. <laughs> have you had 13 assignments a day on a Tuesday night? That's what Chinese schools give you, okay? All right. This, this, this living, doing two courses and doing two jobs, no, nothing. No, my ancestors look at me and they're like, mm, normal Wednesday, normal <laughs> Wednesday. It's okay. It's good. It's good. This boy, okay, I'm not bad at hardworking. Huh? But no, like, I, was, I was more hardworking. Huh? I'm so sure my ancestors are looking down at me and calling me a pussy. Having internet and clean water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. Okay, this is like the most ridiculous podcast we've ever done so far. <laughs> thank you, Cody. But thank you, Cody, man. Happy to provide. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I was going to move on. From, I was going to continue on SAE, but thank you so much for clearing up that your life there and adding an advice. I thank you so much for that. I'm pretty sure someone <laughs> out there will appreciate it. All right. So, I mean, guys, you can take the first part or the final part, okay? Or take both and do what you will with it because yes. that is an advice you probably will not get anywhere else. Only, it's a Cody Fu original. Uh, you probably get it from most Chinese parents. But yes, you can hear from me. All right? You can hear from me. Do your work. Then go to sleep, okay? If not, no dinner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, yeah, you're, no. painting, you're, you're painting a very bad picture about our Chinese community here. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> My parents did not torture me with, uh, with a lack of food. I am very, very slightly overweight. So oh. do not worry. About <laughs> uh, speaking of which, dude, I mean like, in most of your TEDx, uh, by the way, guys, uh, he is a TED, he's a six-time TED uh, TED 
ex speaker as well. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so I forgot to mention that. Sorry, apologies, ah, Kuri. Hey, dude. Um, Mita maaf. Please, please don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> so, um, you did mention a lot of times that, like, you thank your dad a lot. Like, what, I mean, if you don't mind, if you can share, like, what is the dynamic relationship between the two of you? Like, it is, I mean, you look it up is, to him, um, from what I can tell, you look up to him a lot. It's interesting, right? Um, because um, now that I've grown older, Right, I understand that he functioned as a, as a um, a model to chase after, right, and it was the illusion of the idea of what uh, uh, my father's approval looked like, right, and uh, uh, and at the time, what I understood of my father was that he was not there for most of my life, right, and that I somehow am just not living up to the name. I somehow felt that way. He never said that to me. He never once implied that idea to me, but somehow I wanted my approval, my father's approval in that particular way. Um, and when I uh, 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 started climbing the ladder, right, uh, I gave a lot of credit uh, to my father in, in, in helping me conceive the idea of uh, Beat Nation. Beat Nation uh, is uh, the first uh, real organization that I set up. Uh, uh, it's still running to this day. Uh, uh, ran. I I I gave the entire uh, uh, organization to my to my ex partner, uh, uh, and and what ha- uh, what was uh, the inception was that my my father uh, gave me the idea uh, uh, as to not only pursue the passion but but to bring organization to the passion to give to give the market to give the Malaysian market a sense of a hub to call what. To, 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 to demonstrate what a what a what a collective what a creative collective within a genre would, would, would look like and in this case it was just a bunch of beatboxers a bunch of kids who w- like to do sounds with their mouths um, it was really odd it was an odd <laughs> collection of people uh, but it, it served as a uh, as an outlet for a lot of youths to to explore to explore the itch in their minds to to pursue a creative art uh, uh, art form to 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 admire what their bodies could do, right? To push their own limits, those were the things that we provided uh, the community, and 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 it was a very proud uh, uh, foundation of mine, and 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 I credit uh, my, my my father for giving me that that, that advice because I mean, as a nineteen year old, you don't think about starting businesses, you don't think yep. about starting organizations, right? Um, uh, at the time, I was still worrying about if I could pay rent, you know. So, so, so my dad, uh, although ver- uh, absent most of his life, uh, uh, sorry, most of my life, uh, he 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 resided here in 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 Shalam and Kale. So I had more uh, meals with him. I shared more meals with him, uh, uh, and I started to understand his 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 points of views, his wisdoms that he they they, they bestowed upon me, and it was it was really good. Uh, uh, he gave me he gave me uh, uh, the 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 process of critical thought um he 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 made me go through a lot of difficult stuff in my life right but now i understand uh, uh, as a, as an older man that um we're all really trying our best um was he the greatest father he definitely by all means was not the greatest father but he was mine and he meant a lot to me um when i when i when i mention this parental figure i also mention it in the in, a, in an idealistic sort of way, right? In no means, when I say my father, I'm referencing to him as a human being. No, it is my idea of him. He as a human being, I would categorize him differently, right? He as a human being to me has used a lot of his intellect and very little of his emotions, just like most of the people within that, that grew up within the, the 70s and the 80s. They were not taught by their parents because of the huge generational gap. They were not taught by their parents to, to deal with their emotions, to, to, to understand who they were as they, grow, as they grew up. They were very focused. They were very focused in the industrial boom, understanding uh, that you need to go to university, you need to get a job and all that. So my father, my father uh, served as that. As a man crying to a piece of art, <laughs> which is a, a so you think you can dance performance <laughs> at the age of 56, right? He only understood and came to his uh, 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 emotions uh, this age of his life. So, so when I speak about him, it comes from a place of endearment, yes, but also from a place of warning and caution. We must all, we must all come to the, come to the understanding of 
what our anchors are and what our chains are and who built them, right? And for a lot of us, uh, our parents uh, built, built so much of a trauma and, and all the foundations that we built, right? So when I talk about my dad, I talk about him like this, like with all the understanding that there is, um, he is my father. I love him a lot, but not that much. <laughs> I hope that summarizes my thought processes when I talk about my dad. Okay, fair enough. Um, I mean, I'm really glad you came aboard here, man. I mean, I'm really glad that you said yes to this podcast because, like, there's so much we can learn from you, bro. I mean, like, the way you talk and the way you share your experiences, like, dude, it hits a lot of nerves. Like, you're so open that the rest of us feel like, shoot, are we doing, am I doing enough? Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, like, of course, I mean, like, those who know you know you, right? You know, they have seen your personal demons and everything, right? And Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've seen it. So, I'm not here to talk, I mean, like, I do not wish to reach that part, but, like, thank you so much for sharing something so personal with us, man. Like, really. Oh, yeah, no, no worries, yeah. But, yeah. um, once again, like, in 2011, SAE, Tracks FM, working at, at Vertigo, and also starting up a business called Beat Nation. How, man? <laughs> like, I mean, like, how do you manage your time? Like, you, like in 2011, was that like the start of you learning how to time manage? Or were you taught that back in Chinese, in like, uh, in school? Honestly, uh, I didn't really even do well in Chinese school. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I, I didn't really learn all the lessons because I didn't really do any of the homework, really. Right, uh, um, um, the pressure of a deadline uh, uh, really, really messes with me. So... I'm rather free-spirited. Um, I think the way my mind works is that I need to have 10 tabs open in my mind at all times. All right. um, and I find it very boring if I don't. Like uh, during during the pandemic, um, I found myself uh, very, very, very bored. So much so that I started the blockchain business. Um, just because I could, it was the only uh, business I could start from, from the laptop. And uh, uh, right now, I have got team members, in one in New Delhi, uh, uh, one in... Uh, one in Canada and one in uh, one in Singapore, and they're all just doing the thing, and 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 it's and it's amazing, right? Uh, uh but it's it's mostly because I'm bored. Um, it's not like I learned how to time manage. Okay. I just had time, and I wanted to do more things with the time. So go back, going back to your advice of like do the work. Yeah, just do it, right? Like, um, the problem with doing it is I think a lot of us face the. The, 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 the inhibitor of what we think society would judge us as. Like, I think a lot of us don't make the decisions that we want to make because we think that other people might be affected by it. Like, your parents might not look at your career, uh, you know, choice the, the, in the most honorable way. Um, you're, you're, you, you might be afraid that your peers might laugh at you. Let's say if you want to be a stand-up comedian. Like, who is this guy stanley that wants to be a stand-up comedian you know what i mean like he's not funny he's like like people will laugh at your dreams right um but but the whole thesis of of, of doing it is actually really just having that that sense of not caring you just, you just can't care you just can't care about what people think and, and 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 that's what really means when 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 i say that. just do the work Right. Just fuck everyone else and just do the work. Fair enough, man. Um, so when it boils down right to it, right? I mean, like, what is Cody's Cody Coex Fu's passion? Like, what is his main passion? If honestly, I just want to sit on the beach and smoke weed every day. Like, that's that's my real passion. Like, if if you ask me what I want, uh, for the rest of my life, uh, that will be that will be my answer. My uh, so uh, you had a choice of islands. Where would you go? As oh. Well? Honestly, Since we're on that topic, might as well just go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. honestly, Penang, like <laughs> <laughs> back home. <laughs> Penang Island is probably the best island like I I, I can think of, um, uh, for me, for me, not 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 for anyone else, because I don't really like beaches. I, I like development, but I also like trees. I like trees and development. Can I have both at the same time? Singapore would be a great place. Oh. Singapore, would be great. but 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 there's no weed there, so it's fine. There's no weed in Penang too, so I I, I guess I gotta go somewhere else. But um, my main passions, I would say, right, um is to preserve my time. Um, that's one thing I would say I'm very passionate about. Like, of all the things that I do, the number one thing that I aim to do within all of them is to free up as much time as I can. Right now, I work about four hours a week. Uh, that, has been, that has been a great, uh, a consistent uh, goal that I've been keeping up. 
So I work four hours a week and I run four businesses. Yep. How in the world does that work? But yep, please I, continue, continue yeah. on this one first. <laughs> I will ask that one later. Yes, right? yes, yes, yes. Uh, so that's one of my main passions uh, uh, to, to, to free up as much time as I can and also to pursue to pursue a Grammy. Like that's that's my main goal, man. Like I will not rest until I win a Grammy. Do you know what I mean? And even if I do win a Grammy, it's like I, I'm gonna aim for more Grammys. Like there has to be a bigger goal after that. Yep. But but man, like at this point of time, at this point of time, my goals remain on the stage of the Grammys. That is my current goal. My previous goals I've all met. When I want to be a a, a beatbox okay. champion, I, I became a beatbox champion five times. And and during my 19, uh, 20 year old years, I, I was really inspired by by the TED Talks that I've been seeing on YouTube. And I told myself, man, I'm going to be a fucking TEDx speaker. And I became a TEDx speaker six times. And not only that, I became a, a regular speaker in, 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 in many places. Like the last one, I, uh, the last talk I gave was in Shell. Uh, uh, they invited me to, to speak to their, to their management team. I have, I'm a 27-year-old kid. I have no business speaking to a 40-plus mid-tier, high-tier management team, right? In Shell, in Shell no less. But... They paid me five figures for it. I have no idea what value I can give them, but they apparently think that I can. So, so being a speaker, being a TEDx speaker, I've achieved that dream. I've achieved all those dreams. And then I told myself, hey, I, I, I want to make a million US dollars by the time I hit 30. Uh, 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 I've, I haven't hit 30 yet. I'm, 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 I'm three months uh, uh, away from it, but I've already hit that goal. I'm there now. So, so there's n- almost nothing in my life that, that I have not aimed and I have not achieved. So the next step is a Grammy. I want to make music so so influential, so so moving that that it shakes, it shakes the continent, it shakes the generation. I I mean, it sounds real cheesy when I say that. I, I cringed at myself as I said those words. It was horrifying <laughs> to live through. My God, but but it is true. It is genuine. Like there's there's nothing more I can say other than like I am I am so dedicated to this journey. The only reason. Why I started these businesses, these businesses. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason why I started these businesses, right, is is so that I can do music full time. Like no one, no one told me that I have to fucking make money. I needed money to, <laughs> to, to work a, a proper music career. Like no one told me that. No one told me Joe Flizzo had like a label company that gave him hundreds and thousands of ringgits. <laughs> To do his music video and productions and all that crap. Like, I did not know that, but now I do. So now I'm building my team. I don't need this record label. I can get it done myself. Is that, I mean, like, I was going to ask you, like, is that uh, how Co- uh, Coex Productions was uh, came to be? But, like, before that, like, it, did you really start Co- uh, Coex Productions during the pandemic? Yes. Like, when everyone was, like... Everyone was struggling, like, to keep their business and, like, hey, I'm going to start a new business. Like, what was in your head, bro? Yeah. Uh, all I knew, all I knew was that um, uh, I could make, I could make music, right? So, I started this music company uh, uh, because I was bored and, and of course, it was part of the, the grand plan, right? Yeah. The grand plan was um, I needed to build my team. So, I started, um, I started uh, paying this boy right uh to study music production full time so during the pandemic he had a job his job was to just to learn ableton all right what is that ableton is a uh a digital audio workstation right. uh, uh it functions as a, a as a photoshop but uh oh, okay. for, for, for for music for, for music yeah yeah so so <clears throat> so i just that boy just learned uh, uh ableton that was his job and a year and a half later right uh, uh we're making we're making banging beats we're making great, great stuff. Uh, uh, during the pandemic, we managed to score a couple of clients. Uh, uh, we did a couple of jingles, uh, uh, and it was it was great. We got paid, right? Uh, uh, I wouldn't say that I've I've ROI'd, right? right? Uh, uh, from 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 business startup costs, but I would say that we've came a f- long, long, long way, and I'm one step closer to building my team to 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 get to the Grammy. So, so yeah. Wow, I mean like. You really have looked far. <laughs> That's one thing I gotta say, um, because well, here's one funny story about you that I read on your Facebook. So, um, well, by the way, yeah, we are Facebook friends. Just saying. Yes, guys. yes, yes, yes. We are Facebook friends. I've known Mike for many years. Yes, <laughs> it's just that we don't meet up 
because we're both so busy. Yes, yes. But but online friends, is is as much friends as I can get. This yeah. this. <laughs> <part of my life. laughs> yeah. I mean, with the pandemic and all that, man, mm-hmm. I've only been seeing just my girlfriend, and that's that. That's pretty much it. So, but I'm really happy to oh, see your face. You also Mike. have a cat, right? I mean, you got a cat. I recently got a cat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like that helps. Oh yeah, that that has been a great great joy in my life. Yeah, but but yeah, this, it's more like the cat adopted us. It was a stray that could that wouldn't leave the house, and we just decided, yeah, yeah, it deserves to stay in this house. Like, who are we to, who are we to disturb its this territory? <laughs> I just pay rent here. This cat is the true owner of this land, so I just let it stay here, and I vaccinated it, and and it sleeps on my bed now. Yep, the things we do when for we things we do for strays. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So <laughs> back to um, uh, the story that I was going to ask you about is like. You look very far into the future, right? You have, I mean, like, I'm not sure how far you looked into the future, like, when you see yourself in the Grammy, but, like, in your past, there was a certain teacher that said that you will never amount to anything. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, um, there are tough, tough, uh, or difficult or problematic students in the world. I mean, oh, like, yeah. They are. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. We all went to school. We all know there are some morons and idiots out there that... Hell, Yeah. We're wondering, like, how are you still alive? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. looking forward into the future, right? You have done so many things. Like, you've been a champion. Like, that's one thing. Stage one, like, you're a champion. Mm-hmm. You're a motivator now. Because that's why I view how I view speakers. Like, motivators. They give out motivation. They just empower mm-hmm. people to empower themselves. Sure. And now you're starting up. Now you have businesses. You're working as a head of de- business development for several companies, too. Yeah. So... Like, why do you want to say that teacher, man? Um, if he's listening, I mean, I, mean, I hope he listens, man. Um, he probably won't, but um, I mean, I mean, it's so hard to judge a human being, right? It's so hard to judge a human being. When I was a student, I mean, I I'm, I wasn't the greatest student, but at the same time, I wasn't Chinese educated, right? And I was thrown into a Chinese school, like like it was very difficult to keep up like 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 no doubt uh this was in high school right and and, and it was very difficult like primary school um 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 i had uh, uh i went to mandarin school right uh during tra- during primary school um uh, but when i was 1 to 6 years old i only spoke english right and 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 english was the first and main language that I, that I understood that I interfaced the world with so it was very difficult to adopt a whole new culture a whole new language and 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 to see uh, uh you know so i was a cultural pariah right like like i mean listen how i sound i sound so white right how how am i chinese it's so weird right and 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 it's it it showed it showed when i was in high school uh especially coming from a small town so 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 i experienced a lot of same race racism like what kind of chinese person are you right and 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 uh, 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 my culture, my peers, just just didn't really, just didn't really uh, look well onto me. I was bullied massively. Like people, people kept thinking that I was, I was uh, uh, really really action or proud because I spoke English, right? But it's no, it's just an answer. I, I can answer you better in English. I can I can, I can just uh, vocabulary sorry vocabulary. I mean I can I can communicate better, right? Uh, the ideas that 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 and especially when you're like caught in the middle uh when a discipline teacher is 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 inspiring fear through your entire system how are you gonna talk no way can you speak properly so of course i i land back to the language that i'm most comfortable with right so so a lot of my peers saw that uh, uh as like um as a threat like why is this chinese person not wanting to speak chinese like what kind of action is it sombong is it but no not really so 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 my teachers also felt the same way and it, it, it got so bad that I just didn't want to go to school anymore, so I just stayed home, right? I stayed home. I didn't do any of my homework. I was a very bad student, right? Uh, uh, and I experienced massive depression. And it came to a point where my Chinese teacher, my Form 2 Chinese teacher, who was also the Guru Bahasa of, of, of the school, had a 45-minute call with my mother on the phone telling her to give up on me. And my mom was so angry. Like, 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 thank God for my mom. Like, my mom did not take any of that bullshit. Like, it was pure same. Like, we don't talk about um, same race racism uh, enough, right? Yeah, like, know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we only talk about counter race racism. Yep. But, but, but that sort of counter culture within your own culture, like, that, that, that exists and it's really, really, really crazy. It's crazy enough for a teacher to call a mother 
and explain to her the steps of how to give someone up. Like, I was 14 years hell, old. Man. I was 14 years old. What was I going to do? Like, I, I'm not going to fend for myself. Like, like what to give? To give me up? Like, that is crazy. So my mom um, uh, uh, was really angry. Uh, uh, she got politicians involved. And eventually, he was suspended for about, I think, a quarter, like four months oh, or something sorry. like that. I mean that that should that he kind of deserves that kind of like punishment. I mean like you don't. It's one thing to discipline a kid in the wrong way, but then to tell them a parent that they should give up their child is like insane. It's insane. It's, it's insane. insane. Not to mention the, the 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 onslaught and the torture that I had to endure in class. Right, like he would spend sometimes he would spend a full hour just berating on me, like the whole class, and I'd just be there and in the center of attention for one full hour. Can you imagine that? It was yeah. traumatizing, really, really bad. It was enough to inspire me to not want to go to school. Like I just I just didn't want to go to school. I just stayed at home, and I was like, "Yo, like, like, like." I told my mom, and I would fight with my mom. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't skip school and go outside, like, to a cyber cafe. Like, there was nothing there for me. Well, I just stayed home. I just stayed home. So it was. It, it got really bad, especially when he came back. Yeah. Okay. When he came back from the suspension, wow! It was. It was an even crazier time. Um, uh, and you, uh, you just thought things couldn't get any worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My life was real hell at that time. It was I was so lost, so lost, uh, so 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 berated by my and 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 my mom was working all the time, so my only counsel I had was my younger brother, who's eight years younger than me. Like what 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 could he do for me? So it was a it was a bad it was a alone very lonely time. Uh, but yeah, uh, that teacher, uh, I don't think he makes as much money as I do. So I think that's uh good enough. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm doing way better than everyone of my peers, so I think that's good enough. <laughs> I mean, like, congrats, man. I, mean, I mean, like, what else is there to say, man? I mean, you you prove people wrong. I mean, like, yeah, people just don't understand. Man, yeah, because like when they judge, when people judge and they don't see beyond beyond what's the, on the outside, they just see this. That's how do you fight that? Yeah, you man. just take it. You just gotta take it, and like. Dude, you're mentally tough. <laughs> yeah, um, um, not 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 all the time. Uh, of but I, but but I am tougher today. Uh, but we are we we are all tough. Like we have we have so much capacity to do great things. We just haven't met the limit yet. But once we do, hmm. Oh, speaking of limits, right? So, for businesses at the same time. Yeah. So. How is that not the limit for you? I mean, like first, I mean, let's go one by one on this, right? And then we'll go to see. Then I wanna. Then you let's. You can tell us how you remain sane while running for businesses. Okay. So, Coex Coex Productions was yeah. started in the during the pandemic. Uh huh. Before that, you were running the esports. Uh, uh, the one in Johor, right? Yes. Yes. Are you still doing that now? Or are you? No. no, you're not. You're done with that, all right? Yeah. So maybe we'll come back to that. Yeah, that's time. a crazy story too. It's a crazy story too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um. So um. The real uh, estate protocol. Yeah, estate protocol. Ah, uh, missing two others. It's okay. I can, I can, I can all listen right, cool. all right now. So, right. so my first business is a uh, is an e commerce business. Oh yeah, the crypto one. Uh, uh no no no. no uh, uh, e commerce. Uh, so 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 I basically just sell uh, stuff on Amazon. Okay. So that is one of my businesses. All right. Uh, that one rakes me uh, about about five digits a month. It's pretty good, right? Uh, uh mid to high figures. Nice. Uh, and it and it's automated. So uh, one of the reasons why I started that is because I knew that uh, uh, the model was very low. I started with five thousand ringgit, um, and um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it 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 just grows. It just grows. It was the tiniest business I could start that I could spend uh, the least amount of time on. So it it's it's automated. It runs by itself. So Amazon, thank you, Jeff Bezos. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, my second business, uh, Coex Productions, right? It's basically, yeah, we're basically a production house. We 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 make jingles and we make stuff, uh, for for different different clients, and we also make uh, uh lots of uh, uh songs for our different different artists. Mm. Um, um, that's that. Uh, I have Estate Protocol. Uh, it's a blockchain uh company. Uh, what we do is uh, uh we're we're fractionalizing uh real world assets. Uh, in this case, it's real estate. Um, into into uh, fractionalized uh, uh, asset holding uh, forms in in the form of NFTs, so so you can, as as a normal Joe, you can have your hand in in, in investing in the uh, the world's largest uh, a- asset, the world's largest and oldest asset, which is real real estate. And I think uh, uh, you know 
the key to generational wealth is 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 is, is real estate. Anyways, right. So my fourth business uh, uh, is um, it's my esports business. Oh yeah. Right. So uh, uh, in esports, uh, I used to I used to run a a an esports academy uh, next to Legoland. Yeah, in Johor. Yeah, yeah in Johor, uh, Malaysia, and that was pretty fun. Uh, we ran that about two years. Um, oh, okay. Uh, my lawyers warned me, so so I gotta. I gotta withhold some of the information, um, um, but but essentially what happened was, uh, uh, I was I was given a whole bunch of money to start this thing by one of the biggest conglomerates in the continent, and a year and a half later, it was offered to be merged by one of the oldest companies in KL. Wow! <laughs> and in between all of that, I somehow lost everything. Um, it was well. I'll tell you more after the podcast. But okay. but 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 essentially, I got robbed. I got robbed on the on the white collar level. Uh, uh, it was pretty insane. Uh, I was yeah. I need to I need to be really careful. Uh, yeah, because it's not the, my the, lawyers will, will will scold me. Yeah, <laughs> especially when the when the esport service still exists. The the academy still exists. Oh now. yes 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 yes. It, it still it, does. It does it does still exist. Uh, uh, although it doesn't do anything. It's just an empty shell. Uh, my beautiful baby <laughs> reduced to a shell. But uh, when we did run it, it was fantastic. Uh, uh, so we still do run. Uh, 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 we still do have a hand in the esports business. We still organize events uh, uh, on large scale. Uh, we still uh, own a couple of teams. Uh, and right now, uh, uh, we accidentally started an Axie Infinity uh, scholarship. Okay. Oh, yes. I just, well, just want to ask you this. I was going to ask you this. I forgot. I just remembered. Esports management. Talent management. Yes, talent yes, management. Right. That's what you got. That's what the esport is. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I just he just came to my. Sorry for interrupting you, Cody. Yeah, no worries. It was like, no worries. oh my god, epiphany. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's basically talent management. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, uh, uh, that those are my four businesses. All right. So okay, to the esports part. All right. So there has been this stigma for so long that esports athletes should not be called athletes. What is your opinion on that? I think, I think people pay a lot to see high level skills. Yep. People pay a lot to see high level skills in tennis. People pay a lot to see high level skills in, in, in snooker. The would you call a snooker player an athlete? We call they call them billards, I guess. Sure. <laughs> but would would you call them an athlete? They are indeed playing a physical sport, right? You could you could argue that it is the pussiest of all athletes. Right? I, you what could. about chess though? <laughs> no no one calls a, a chess player an athlete. Okay, that's true. It is a sport. It's a competition. No, it's a sport, yeah. My opinion, chess is a sport. That is my opinion. I will argue anyone to the death on that subject. But um, people pay a lot of money to look to 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 look at high skills, right? Yep. And I think an esports player needs to do everything a normal football player needs to do. They need to watch the diet. They need to watch the mental. They need to communicate with the team well, and they still need to practice their craft. And the speed of their fingers, that 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 is athletic. Yep, I have to agree on that one. How do you how do you make a split decision and have it translate within your fingers within a split second? That stuff. So yes, I, I do think that they're athletes, uh, in the category of, of all its definition. Fair enough. Thank you so much, man. I mean, because I mean, some people like um, a lot of people like look down on e- on esports athletes because like oh we don't see what they do but like there is a huge market there is a huge business for esports oh, yeah. like my god like, oh my oh my I you mean, guys like, have no idea yes it's so big <laughs> like if you just see it in Malaysia yeah it looks small but you just need to go to Singapore you need to go to Taiwan that's it and like it is like a whole culture subculture from the subculture to a culture of its own bro um like I was saying um like. Do you in, do you, like who, like do you intend to bring Malaysia's esports to the next level? Like to try at least like maybe like train more athletes, like or scout more athletes for your men for yourself for your company. Right now, no. Uh, right now, uh, we are scouting talents, but not for anything professional. Right. Um, it's more for a a personal uh small scale project. Uh, but but when you talk about esports, uh. It's very hard to say uh, esports uh, without saying the word Malaysia. So Malaysia is already or on the map. Like in terms of, we we export the best players. Yep. We have some of the most insane, insane human beings. The talent here is of no shortage. What we do have shortage of is organizational strength and competition. 
and competition. On a competitional level, at this point, it's fine because we're at the stage where we can all play on the same server, right. Southeast Asian server. It's already kind of international. We've already kind of broken broken the borders with uh, with esports into different different continents, and we're we're stuck with four, mm-hmm. with the EU, the NA, <laughs> the Oceania, and then the Asia, right? The Southeast yeah. Asia. So 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 Malaysians, we are we are on par. We are on the. Just recently, uh, uh, this guy called Nothing to Say. Uh, his name is called Nothing to Say, uh, and and he's from Johor. He recently won twenty one million ringgit. Uh, from uh, uh, a Dota competition uh, uh, called The International okay. and it was The International 10. Is it 10? TI 10. Uh. I think it's 10 right now. Okay. Yeah. So during TI 10, uh, his team won second place. Okay. Wow. And uh, uh, his his personal take home was 21 million ringgit. So Malaysians were the best. In fact, he is so good that nothing to say guy, he was seen as the, the crowd favorite to win the whole tournament, the entire tournament. Wow. We are so... And he's 21 years old. Nothing to say. He used to hang out in our academy. He used to be managed uh, 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 by some of our, my, my, my teammates uh, uh, when, when they were in Geek Fam. It's crazy, these talents. So we are, we are, we are great. Right. Just that we, just, so, we don't have uh, to... Just the f- a final question on esports. On esports. Um, who, what kind of uh, gamers... I mean, what kind of like games do you, are usually on, are on competition? Because like, aside from Dota, aside from Mobile Legends, like what are the more minor ones, you I would have to say, like the ones that were not so famous on the international scene. All right. Um, there's always FIFA, right? Uh, okay, that, FIFA, major, that, should, that should be in the major part, okay? okay. Uh, it's not, actually. It's, uh, not? it's relatively small. Uh, uh, not many people compete professionally on FIFA. Uh, there's not enough of a, of a, of a main stage uh, to get it done. But there are other games... Uh, that's not so big, I, I guess, but 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 have a really strong community. Like for example, Hearthstone. Hearthstone is one of the oldest, uh, 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 uh most most consistent games in the market. Like they've been around since two thousand thirteen or fourteen, um, and and they have one of the strongest communities I've ever seen. It's a it's a it's a it's a stupid card game, but it's a very well made card game. It's better than Magic: The Gathering. It's, it's different. Okay, it's different. Fair enough. It's different than Magic: The Gathering. Magic: The Gathering is much more intricate. You have a lot more uh, 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 angles Both, to play. Yeah. Uh, Hearthstone is more it's so it's a it's more of a glorified rock paper scissors match. <laughs> really? <laughs> so it's like the like a big like you know like what the thing that Shalom came up with what, from Big Bang like you know rock paper spot lizard. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. It's it's just a slightly more complex version of rock paper scissors, and 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 that's what we that's what we aim to do. Okay. We aim to build. Right, we aim to play games that have. How many of you are addicted to Candy Crush? Like, it's it's a simple, addictive, repetitive game, and it's that it's and it's that dopamine loop. That's what it is. That's what game is. So yeah, people love watching. Uh, uh Hello. people do great stuff on Fair games. Enough. All right, so um, I guess uh, one final question. I guess so. One final question. All right. So um, wow, I mean, like, I can't believe it's just been an hour. <laughs> I feel like we just started. Wow. Yeah, it's only been an hour. Like, wow. Yeah, it's been an hour. So, um, usually I know how to close. I have a final question, but like, I'm just kind of lost. So, uh, I'm just going to ask like, what does the future hold for Cody Fu? I do not know. I do not know. I can't tell you. Um, I didn't know I was going to start an e- uh, uh, a blockchain company. I didn't know I was going to, um, I didn't know I was going to uh, uh, live off beatboxing for five years. I didn't know I was going to be a Trex FM DJ for nine months. I did not know. What I do know is what I want to achieve. And uh, uh, and I do know that uh, I definitely had a great conversation with you, Mike. Thank you so much, man. So that's that's all I know. That's all I know. Uh, I know that I'll work harder than most of you. I'll, <laughs> that's a given fact. <laughs> I, I know that, uh, uh, I know that uh, uh, no matter what, uh, the edge of being a human being is just keeping your mind sharp. So I will keep my mind sharp. And I will keep my body fit, and and I will be great. That's all I will know. Cool. So that is that is it all from right. Cody Coex Wow! Thank you so much, Cody, for gracing us with your appearance today, man. Like, thank you so much. Hey, it's... man. So I mean, like, no I'm gracing. pretty sure someone's. I'm pretty sure our fans just want to hear one of your famous beatbox, uh, like, 
songs. I was not sure how to call it. Like, what, okay. like simple one, guys. Like, keep it simple. Don't okay. go any. Don't go to any like new <clears throat> trap kind of style. Like, keep it simple hip hop, okay. man. Okay, I gotta, I gotta. Uh. <laughs> So yeah, that's it. That's it. Thank you so much, Cody Fu. This is one of the best episodes we had here on Sembang Sehat. I'm Mike Azmin. He's Cody Fu. We're out. Thank you so much.